Hi there everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here, with another episode of Magic Jewels. So for today's episode, I'm very excited to be bringing you my version of the uh, Super Friends deck. So we're running four colours in this deck, did try to work blue into it, and it wasn't really doing anything for the deck, it was difficult to get the mana base correct. I think if like Trilands were ever introduced, it might become more viable, but the fact that you have to try and fit five different colours of mana in makes it... It, it like a lot more difficult to actually get down the mana that you want so dropping that blue because i mean all you're really getting from it is jace anyway and you know unless you include something like sphinx's tutelage which again is quite situational it's not really that worthwhile so we're just running the four colors which seems to be the most popular let's start looking at the deck so to begin with we've got the one mana oath of nissa so uh, when this enters the battlefield we can look at the top three cards of our deck and we get to put a creature land on planeswalker into our hand which is quite nice also once this is down we can also basically use any color mana to cost planeswalk to cast planeswalkers which is absolutely fantastic so we don't we, while this is down we don't need to worry about what mana we've got down to play our planeswalkers out and there are a lot of planeswalkers in this deck next we've got the sylvan ranger so the replacement for the uh, gate creeper vine so for two mana, uh, we get a 1-1 one, one body, which is quite nice, so it can actually do damage, unlike the old Gate Creeper Vine. And then we can also search for a basic uh, land card and put it into our hand. Next we've got the two mana Oath of Chandra, so another legendary enchantment. So when it comes down, we can use it to dish out three damage to target creature. So it's not the most useful, not, not as though we can direct it at planeswalkers or players, but uh, just at creatures. Uh, and then also its secondary effect is whenever we've played a planeswalker that turn, we get to deal two damage directly to our opponent's face. So it's uh, only one copy of that as it's a little bit more situational than Oath of Nissa, for example. Then got some Grasp of Darknesses, so a nice uh, dual black um, instant minus four minus four spell. I mean, what I don't get is that also in, I can't remember if it's in Shadow of, Shadows of Rinnestrad, but there's a five mana spell, which is exactly the same. Let me try and find it. Where is it? Uh, I know it's five mana because I was looking at it going, that's exactly the same and a lot worse. Hang on. I want to find it now. I've mentioned it. So let me have a quick look around. I really want to find it. There we go. Throttle. It's five mana and does exactly the same thing. I mean, it's single black, so potentially in that case it's um, better in that regard, but why? It's, it's, it, it, I know it's in different sets. This is also from Shadows over in, over in this round. This is from uh, uh, what's the one? Oath of the Gatewatch, but still, that's bonkers. Like, it's exactly the same card, just a lot worse. Um, okay, next up we've got Nissa, so a three mana uh, flip planeswalker. So when she comes down, we can search up our deck for a play, uh, for a for a forest, sorry, not planes. And then when we flip her over, we've then got Nissa Sage Animus, so we can uh, look at the top, basically draw the top card of our library. If it's a land, it goes directly onto the battlefield. We can summon a 4 4 green elemental creature token, or we can, when we get to our ultimate ability, minus seven, uh, it's minus seven hurt and turn six far, uh, six far manners into a 6 6 elemental creatures. Uh, we've got Oath of Gideon, so three mana uh, enchantment. So when it comes down, uh, we get to put two 1 1 cut. Uh, core white ally creature tokens onto the battlefield my god use your words ollie and then also when this is down each of our planes oh, each of our planes walkers comes down with an additional loyalty counter on it which is pretty awesome we've then got anguish the masking so it's a three mana instant uh, where we can essentially just remove uh, any kind of non-land permanent from play so we just exile it do lose three life but it's uh, pretty useful for removing big threats and enchantments that we don't like uh, first of our sweepers is Radiant Flame, so a three mana converge card where we can basically deal a maximum of three damage across the board and just wipe away uh, lots of threats. So it's very, very cheap and very, very efficient. And then running Exquisite Firecraft, so a nice uh, four damage uh, guaranteed, almost dam guaranteed damage to our opponent's face or a big creature if we want to remove that. First of our non-flip planeswalkers, so we've got Nissa, Voice of Zendikar, so a three mana planeswalker. Uh, she's a token generator where we can put a 0-1 green plant creature token on the battlefield to plus one -er, Put a plus one plus one counter on each of our creatures to minus two her. And then also uh, her ultimate ability is to gain X life and draw X cards where X is the number of lands you control. They've got Kalitas, Traitor of Get, so uh, a four mana uh, legendary vampire creature. So it's got lifelink, so it's a three four lifelinker. Also, whenever an opponent's uh, creature dies, we get to put a black, a two two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. And then we can also sacrifice those uh, zombies to pump up Kalitas if we want to, which is quite nice. 
Uh, we've got Woodland Wanderer. So the reason this is in the deck is mostly because it's converged. So almost always on turn four, we're playing this as a 6-6 six, six Vigilance, Vigilance Trample creature, which is pretty fantastic. Then got Languish, so the uh, next of our sweepers, so a four mana double black uh, sorcery where we get to basically sweep the board for minus four. Uh, we've then got Gideon, so another one of our planeswalkers, so a four mana uh, white planeswalker where we can uh, either plus one him to turn him into a five five human soldier uh, with indestructible until end of turn. Uh, with the all we can also zero him for a 2-2 white knight ally creature token or minus four him to get the emblem where all of our creatures have plus one plus one. Got Nahiri, so another Planeswalker, so we can plus two her to you may discard a card if you do draw a card, so we can get rid of excess mana or excess spells that we don't necessarily need late game. Uh, we can minus two her to exile target um, enchantment or tapped artifact or tapped creature, which is uh, quite nice, so really good artifact removal. Sorry, enchantment removal or creature removal if they're tapped. Uh, her uh, kind of her ultimate ability is to search our library for any artifact creature card uh, sorry artifact or creature card and put it onto the battlefield so it's good just for searching up big creatures obviously we're running no artifacts in this deck but it's still nice to be able to search up uh, a creature that we want such as something like avacyn or uh lil van L sorry yeah lil lin lin oh my god my words aren't working today lin vala there we go got out eventually then got Arlen Cord, she's making a reappearance from the werewolf deck, but in this case it's a super friends deck, so her plus one when she comes down as a human form is to uh, give one target creature plus two, plus two and vigilance and haste. Or we can zero her to put a 2-2 two -two wolf green creature token onto the battlefield and transform her into Arlen Embraced by the Moon, where her plus one is to give um, all creatures plus one, plus one and trample until end of turn. We can minus one her to deal three damage to target creature and then we transform her back. Or her ultimate ability is to get an emblem with creatures you control have haste and you can tap them down to deal damage equal to its power to target creature or player, which is pretty cool. Then got the Archangel Avacyn, so uh, it's a 5 mana angel fly, uh, flying and vigilance creature uh, with 4-4. Four, four. Uh, you can flash her in on, uh, on your end step or your opponent's end step for example. When you do so, all creatures you control gain indestructible, so it's quite nice for kind of maybe preserving some of our tokens that we've generated with like Nissa, for example. Uh, also, when a non-angel creature that you control dies, so that doesn't necessarily have to be a permanent, or sorry, a non-token, it can be a token that can die as well. So when one of your, just any other creature you control dies, you flip her over to become Avacyn the Purifier, so a 6-5 flyer, and when she does transform, she deals 3 damage across the board, including to our opponent's face as well. Uh, we've then got Planar Outburst, so I think the last of our sweepers, yep. Um, so it's a 5 mana, destroy all non-land creatures, which is quite nice, as it preserves our planeswalkers, stuff like that. We can also awaken uh, a, ma a mana, a land, if we want to, for 8 mana. We've then got Omnixilis, so a 5 mana double black planeswalker, so just a nice card draw. Uh, planeswalker, so we do lose a life when we draw a card, but that's fine. You can also use it for creature destruction to minus three him when he comes into the battlefield. And then the ultimate ability of Obnixilis is to basically generate an emblem on our opponent's side of the field, so whenever they draw a card, they lose two life. Sorry, whenever any player draws a card, they lose two life, which is kind of cool. So it synergizes up quite nicely with his uh, plus one ability as well. We've got then, then got Linvala the Preserver, so a six mana uh, angel with flying. Uh, it's got some really cool special abilities, so when it enters the battlefield, if our opponent has more life than us, we gain five life, so nice for kind of like maybe jumping back over our opponent, keeping us in, in the game that little bit longer. Also, if uh, she comes down and our opponent then controls more creatures than us, we also get to put a, an additional 3-3 three, three white angel creature token onto the battlefield as well. Uh, for the penultimate uh, Planeswalker, we've got Chandra, so a six mana Planeswalker, so our most expensive one. Great Planeswalker though, so we can either put two 3-1 uh, red elemental creature tokens with haste onto the battlefield every turn. Uh, we do have to exile them, but you know you can do some crazy damage on an empty board with these uh, creature tokens. We can use it to kind of refresh our hand if we don't like it, so we can discard all our cards in our hand and then draw that many cards plus one. So if we've, just say we've got like three, three mana in hand, we could use Chandra to completely discard it and then redraw it with four potentially better cards. Uh, but what is really cool about Chandra is the fact we can use her as a pseudo sweeper as well. So we can uh, minus X Chandra to deal X damage to each creature. So when she comes down, she can deal up to a maximum of four, but you probably don't want to do that. You probably want to do like two or three to maybe uh, get rid of, uh, kind of keep at bay some aggressive decks. 
And then finally, to finish off with, we've got Sorin, Grim Nemesis, so a six mana uh, white black planeswalker. So Sorin is pretty fantastic. So we can reveal the top card of our library, put that into our hand. Each opponent loses uh, life equal to its converted mana cost. So say, for example, we were to draw Chandra, uh, our opponent would lose six life. We can also minus X Sorin to deal X damage to target creature or planeswalker, and you can gain X life. So, you know, refresh our life, uh, deal, uh, remove a creature, which is pretty cool. And then Sorin's ultimate ability is to put a, a put a number of one one black vampire knight creature tokens with lifelink onto the battlefield equal to the highest life total among players. That is just crazy. You, if you had like thirty life, you could essentially put thirty tokens onto the battlefield, which is just bonkers. And then to finish off with, I've gone for Omnath. You know, I I, I needed a I needed a sixtieth card, and I was like, what can I include? And I was kind of uh, debating which one to include. And I finally went to Omnath, just as a kind of a late game creature. Which if we've sold out to the late game, we can drop him. He's a uh, he's a nice 5-5 five, five body. Uh, he's got the landfall ability to put extra elemental creature tokens onto the battlefield. So he's kind of like a late game luxury drop in my opinion. Just, just to go with all the other kind of like big cards we've got in this deck. In terms of the mana base, we've got two of each of the basic manas. Then got one Hissing Quagmire and one Shambling Vent to potentially generate the, uh, the Awakened Lands if we want to. And then we've got one Woodland Cemetery, uh, two Rootbound Crags, two Cliff... Cl two Cliff... Yeah, cliff top retreats, two isolated chapels, one dragon force, one dragon skull summit, even two sand petal groves, and four revolving wilds for mana fixing. Okay, that's the deck. Let's go play some games. Okay, guys, here we are for game number one. We're playing the rank 28 Jack Morrison to begin to begin with. My god, I just can't speak today, can I? Um, I am not going to keep this hand. Whereas this one I am going to keep. Yeah, that first one, if one of those mana had been a green one, I would have definitely have kept it. But uh, this one is much better. We've got four different colours to trigger the Woodland Wanderer. We've got Nyssa, we've got Gideon. So, you know, this is a pretty good opening hand, in my opinion. We've also found another Planeswalker in the Heary. So, just wondering what I want to drop next turn. I suppose it doesn't really matter too much. We just basically just want to start dropping all of our tap lands as soon as possible. So he's searching up for, let's have a quick look, he's gone for a, uh, a red mountain, so I'm almost tempted to play Nissa on turn 3 just so we can actually get Woodland Wander out on turn 4, although that doesn't actually matter anymore because we can actually get, uh, I'm thinking, a red mana here. So if we play out the Sun Petal Grove and then Sylvan Ranger, because we've got double black for our... What's what I'm looking for, like Languish and some of our other double black spells later on. So I really want just another red red source for potentially... Um, what's what I'm looking for? Uh, brain's gone funny here. Yeah, red source for um, Kandra later on, in case we don't happen to get the Oath of Nyssa. Okay, Stoic Builder and Spatfield, you may return target non target land card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, that's interesting. So he's basically able to use that to bring back Evolving Wilds. That's, that's, that's kind of cool. I didn't realize you could use it for that reason, but uh, hey-ho. Okay, awesome. We've got uh, an Oath of Gideon this turn, so I think we'll just drop the Mountain this turn and then drop the Oath of Gideon. And then next turn, I probably want to play out Woodland Wanderer. And then the turn after that, I'm thinking maybe Gideon. Just get him down, start uh, generating some tokens, or maybe even Nahiri could uh, drop her, if he plays that out, I could drop her and then minus two or almost straight away. Okay, so he's played out an Arling Cord, so he's got a Planeswalker of, Planeswalker of his own. So he's going to plus zero, yep, Arling Cord, generate the Wolf token. Is he going to swing with the Stoic Builder? If he does, I was going to uh, destroy it with Nahiri, but that is fine. Okay, we do have an exquisite Firecraft, which is nice, which we could potentially use next turn to destroy um, Arling Cord if we want to. We could even do that now, I suppose, although I, I do really want to get Woodland Wanderer down, so I'm just going to skip attack here, and then we'll drop you for four, get a nice big fat 6-6 six, six down. Very nice. So yeah, I can... Exquisite Firecrafter uh, Arlen next turn. Just outright get rid of her. And then we'll probably start to look playing out our Planeswalkers. Okay, we've got Abbot of Carol Keep here. So is he going to find anything good for himself? What's he found? He can play it. Oath of Nyssa. Okay, so it looks like we've got uh, some super friends, maybe? Action? I don't know. He's definitely got more than one Planeswalker if he's running Oath of Nyssa. 
So we can search up his uh, library for something. We will see what it is, because he will reveal it to us, what he found. Okay, so we found a Peer and Kieran the last. So that's interesting. We could really do one of our sweepers then, if that's the case. Something like even just, um, yeah, any of our sweepers would be fantastic right about now to just find them off the top. Okay, so he's put out a fertile thicket so he can find himself another mana. I'm assuming he may decide to plus one Arling Cord this turn. No, he did not. He may do it next. See what he does. He can plus one it on his off step. He's too. He's, he's done it too late now to take advantage of uh, uh, pumping up these two because he's already, got, already gone to his attack phase and unfortunately Planeswalker abilities are sorcery speed only. So let's see what he does. So yeah, I think Isolated Chapel is obviously going to come down next turn. I'll give us five mana. Then we probably want to start thinking about maybe getting Gideon down, generating some tokens. Okay, so he's done nothing there. I'm, I'm almost tempted just to drop Gideon straight away. Okay, so he's decided to minus one uh, Arlen Cord and just flip her straight back over. Okay, ooh, Languish. Yes, one of my sweepers. Exactly what I wanted to see, especially with as we know that um, Pier and Kirin Nalara is coming down fairly soon. So, what do we do here? Do we? So we can't obviously play Gideon this turn. I could play Nahiri. Um, I could also Exquisite Firecraft Arlencore, just get rid of it, just like straight away. Is that a good idea? Or do I just swing with Woodland Wanderer? Um. I might swing Woodland Wanderer. If he decides to block with everything, you know, I, I'd call that a win in my books. If not, he is going to lose um, Arlen Cord. So he's going to block with you and block with you. Is he going to triple block? He is going to triple block. So what do we go for? I'm going to get rid of the Stoic Builder. And can I destroy all of these? I can actually destroy all of these. It doesn't actually matter which one I kill first because I'm actually going to kill every single one of these with my Woodland Wanderer. So... I call that a win, personally. Um, and then we shall go for... Do I go for Nissa or do I go for Nahiri? I'm going to go for Nahiri here, just because... Um, Nissa, I'd, I'd almost like one more mana first, so I'm going to... I could exile, for example. I could actually exile the Oath of Nissa if I really wanted to. Um, but I am actually going to just go plus two her instead. I'm not going to discard a card, I'm just going to plus two her for now. Uh, don't really want to get rid of any of these, so I'm just going to plus two her, just, just obviously to activate her loyalty ability. Do I get to put this on the battlefield? Yes, I do. Awesome. So if I can plus two up once more, I can then think about getting something like, for example... Okay, so he's gone for the Sylvan Ranger. Okay. So no Peer and Kieran Nalar this... Well, I could actually still see a Peer and Kieran Nalar. <laughs> If he dropped that, so yeah, I'm expecting Peer and Kieran here. Yes, so Languish will be the order of the day next turn. I'm hoping he decides to flip over Arlingcord as well, just so I get the wolf token. Yes, he decides to do that. Nope, he decided to give you plus four and haste this turn. Okay, so I will block you with, you know, one of these, because it doesn't really matter either way, as... Um, I'm about to languish the hell out of his entire board here, so... What are we going to get? Ooh, Sun Purple Grow. Very nice. So, can I... Unfortunately, I don't think I can languish and Gideon this turn, unfortunately, so... Yeah, let me have a quick look. So, that's going to take up four mana, so... I'm going to just languish now, as this won't be able to swing anyway. And then we shall, plus two you. Uh, we're not going to toss away any of these, so yeah, Gideon's definitely going to be the order of the day next turn, I think. May decide to also exquisite Firecraft uh, Island Cord, or we could even play Nissa out. That might be a better play. What have we got here then? Ullenvold Hydra. Okay, so apparent reference equal to the number of lands you control. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a land card. Okay, that's a pretty big creature. That's a very big creature, in fact. So I just think, is there any creature in my... Can I put a... So, okay, so he's just given that haste. So Nahiri is actually about to die here. 
I could do with something to destroy that ideal, otherwise I'm in a really bad place. So that's a 10 10, that's bonkers. Well, goodbye, Nahiri, it was nice knowing you. Okay, so what do we do this turn? Give me something good, give me something good. That is not good. Oh, I just did something really quite silly there. I decided to, um, what's the one I'm looking for? Yeah, I decided to uh, accidentally play a mana out before playing out Nissa because I could have actually flipped her there. So I may just play out Gideon here and then generate, um, is he going to give it trample? Actually, Gideon's not the best idea here, actually. Nothing's a good idea here because I should have flipped Nissa to try and find something better here because I could play Gideon out but Basically what's gonna happen is that he's just gonna get eaten straight away because he can give Oh, no, actually just realized he hasn't actually flipped Arlen Cord. So unless he's got some like, other way of giving that trample, I should be okay So he's going to minus two you I mean I could play out Nissa here And just get ready for next turn Just so we're a bit more mana efficient Nah, we'll, we'll, we'll save her. How can we can play Exquisite Firecraft? Oh yeah, it's only three mana, isn't it? Do I just kill Arlen Cord? That is, that is the question here. I could just outright kill her, stop her doing any other kind of shenanigans, which I think is probably a good shout. Using my mana a bit more efficiently that way as well. No chance of her uh, flipping and giving that trample or whatever, so... Yeah, that's a pretty terrifying card. We could do something like... Oh, he's got... Ro How did I not see that? I completely missed the fact he had a Rogue's Passage there. I... I've just, I've just gone full retard all of a sudden. I just did not see him play that out at any point in this match. If I'd seen that, I definitely wouldn't have played Gideon out. Well, that's my own silly fault. Never mind. And what else have we got? We've got Tireless Tracker. So he gets to investigate, I think. Okay, no, whenever a mana into the battlefield, he gets to investigate. This is a pretty crazy deck. I've not seen this kind of deck before. So he does get to pump up his Ullenwald Hydra even further. So we could do with one of our destroy spells. Uh, Planar Outburst would work for me, too. Any kind of sweeper. Nope, of course not. So uh, we're just going to play out Nissa here just to see if we actually you know, find something decent here. So what we're going to do is we're just uh, we're, we're trying to basically flip Nissa. So we're going to hoping that we can find something which will help us out. If not, we're a little bit screwed anyway, so... Okay, we, fa we found a mana. You know, fantastic. That's the last thing we needed. You know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to swing anyway, because if he blocks with that, fine. This is dead anyway, so whatever. Yeah, I was hoping for a Planar Outburst, I was hoping for a um, Obnixilis, I was hoping for... Uh, would anything else have helped there? I don't think so, really. This is just an absolutely bonkers card, like, I just needed to have a Destroy spell for that, and I just did not have it, unfortunately. I mean, he's probably going to attack Nissa, like so. He doesn't even need to use his Rogue's Passage, and then he's just going to attack my face. So yeah, that's just outright annoying. And he's got an Omnath. Of course he's got an Omnath. We can do their own Omnath, but... Uh... And he's even managed to generate a token as well. Yeah, a Planar Outburst right here would be absolutely amazing. Yeah, it could really do with a Planar Outburst off the top would be awesome right about now. Come on, Planar Outburst. Come on, Planar Outburst. Come on. I, I believe. I believe. Heart the cards, heart the cards, heart the cards. Planar Outburst, come on! Come on! Come on, mate, hurry up in your turn. I want to top deck the, the clutchest of clutch Planar Outbursts ever. Yeah, if he, if I Planar Outburst here, he'd be really quite up shit creek without a paddle. I apologise for my language, but, uh, come on, Planar Outburst, come on! No, we get a shambling vent. <laughs> for, uh, so can we actually win here? Because like next turn he's going to deal. So even if we were to like play out the shambling vent here, uh, it comes in tapped as well. So we can't even turn it into a. So even if we block, say for example, you and you, he will still push through five, ten, thirteen, fourteen damage. So you know at this point we we're getting to the point where we're kind of a little bit boned. So 
So yeah, he generates another Omnath here. So I think at this point we needed we need basically all we really needed there was a plate of cleansing, and that would have been the only thing which would have. So he's going to turn you into an elemental creature. Why can we not do that? There we go. Okay, no, it's tap. So yeah, we, we're just outright dead. I didn't realise that was actually going to come down tap. So how much are we taking here? Three. Yeah, we're, we're just dead. Outright dead. Fantastic. Look at that. Beautiful. That was a really good match from him. So let's move on to a second game, I think. Okay, guys, here we have for game number two. Unfortunately, the opponent has been replaced by the AI, so I'm going to play it out just to finish off the episode. I can't... Uh, this is looking like an okay hand. Yeah, I think I'll keep this one. So I think we shall grab ourselves a black man to start off with, just so we can actually then potentially play out Languish sometimes too. Yeah, so our opponent is... they. Ha oh, come on. They have left, unfortunately, so... Uh, we are playing against the AI, but, you know, I don't really have time to queue up for another opponent. Plus, I don't really want to lose the rank, so... Okay, we'll drop the second Evolving Wilds here, just so we can get ourselves a red source. Is that probably the best play here? Yeah, I think red, red's looking like a good idea. So let's make sure we grab that before his uh, end step. The AI's end step. So yeah, I hate when uh, the, kind of, the opponent disconnects, because it then basically means that... Um, we don't get to just automatically leave the game and um, claim the victory, which is quite annoying. So unfortunately we have actually got to play this out instead. But hopefully we get the victory and then open up some packs at the end. So we'll see how the uh, the AI gets on. Okay, so he's got a tireless tracker. Just wonder if there's anything I can do with that. Ooh, we've got ourselves a... Uh, Silver and Ranger, which we can't actually do anything with, so I think we're just going to skip attack for now. We'll be able to play you out next turn, which is fine. Oh yeah, that was already green source, unfortunately. So he does get to investigate there, thanks to his tireless tracker and draw a card. So whenever you sacrifice a clue, put a one, plus one plus one counter on tireless tracker. Okay. I don't know if it's worth just outright languishing that, just to stop it getting too big in future. I mean, we've got the planar outburst potentially for later on, so we're just going to prevent that from dealing any damage to us this turn. And then we might just languish next turn. Or do we stick with it a bit longer? Ooh, we do have the Grasp of Darkness. That's very nice. So I am going to... Yep, that's the perfect combination I want. Leaves the Grasp of Darkness open. Okay, so he's got his own Grasp of Darkness, which he's using on my core ally. Very bizarre. So I think we'll grab a green source here, and then just outright Grasp of Darkness his Tireless Tracker. It's like, suck it! Tireless Tracker wins. Um, okay, so we've got Lilvana potentially upcoming soon. We need one more mana for her, I think, though. So he's got nothing this turn. Okay, excellent. We've got the Hissing Quagmire, which is nice. So we're just going to keep moving on. We'll play out Lilvana next turn. Just uh, responding to my wife, she's on her way home. Which is why I say I didn't really have time to play another game. Just realised that uh, I've actually got the Sylvan Ranger open here. So yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't think I'd have enough time to uh, kind of win this one and queue up another one. So it's a good job I decided to stick with this one and do some commentary over the top of it. So yeah, Lilvana will be coming down next turn. I mean, we won't get any of, the, any of the benefits out of her, but it's more the fact that it's just, it's just, just going to be a 5-5 five, five creature. Okay, so explosive vegetation from him, so he's just, just essentially ramping up. We could really do with the Planeswalker, especially as we've got Oath of Gideon down as well. He's just finding all the mana right now. Hopefully he doesn't have, like, an ob... Uh, not an object, so let's say, uh... What's the... What's the blooming, um... Omnath, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so let's play Cliff Drop Retreat out, and then we'll just swing with you. And then just play out Lilvana. Linvala. Oh my god, I can't even say it right. Linvala. There we go. So we don't get any of the benefits from her, but uh, that's fine by me. So it's more of a... So at this point, he's dead in six turns, if we keep swinging for six. How much mana have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more would be nice. Okay, so he's got Oblivion Sower. 
So he gets to nick some of my mana and uh, mill down a Kalitas. That would have been nice. So at this point, I think we can race him down, even though he's got the Oblivion Sower. So I'm, I'm, I'm almost expecting um, the... What's, what's the Eldrazi called? My god, it was like all the rage before the expansion came. Oh, thank, thank god for that. We've got Anguish and Masking. So I'm actually going to save that in case we do... In case he plays... Um, what's it called? The one that exiles... Oh my god, my brain! So we can actually give you Death Touch, can't we? So yeah, that's a good thing for that one. So we're probably just going to hold open our mana here for either an Anguished Unmasking or a Hissing Quagmire. Yes, the, the Eldrazi. The Eldrazi Titan. What's he called? Um, Kozak's a new one. Um, the Butcher of Truth. Is it Butcher of Truth? Okay, so we've got uh, Chandra. So we could potentially Anguished Unmask her. Just outright, just exile her. So she's gonna plus one and drop down the uh, what's it called? The the elementals, which we can kill one of with the Sylvan Ranger. So I was gonna see if he's gonna block first, in which case I will activate the hissing quagmire, bring it down. Make sure we leave a white and a black open for uh unless we can tap three these three down. So he's getting more mana here. So basically we want to try and keep Norvana uh, alive so we can, so we, we're trying not to play in her outburst at this point. And I'm thinking of Anguished and Masking the Chandra, seeing what else he does. This is the AI here. Okay, so he is doing four to Lilvana. Okay, so he's doing a few to Lilvana, one to my Sylvan Ranger and one to my face. Okay, interesting. I'm guessing he's done that, so I can't actually... I don't know why he decided to just want to Lovana, but... Uh, so I was going to activate Hissing Quagmire here. Because that way we can then Death Touch the... Uh, you. We're then going to Anguished Unmask you. We do lose three... We, we will go down to, was it, nine? But at least we've dealt with all of them now. Okay, excellent. We've got Avacyn. So we've got a second fly, which we can flash in. So we're going to take him down to... Is that eight? Pretty cool. And we'll probably just flash her in uh, at the end step. So to see what the my opponent plays first. Like I said, if uh, we get the Eldrazi down, I can't remember what he's called. So we are going to flash in Avacyn now. And we should be able to swing for lethal here, potentially. We do have nine damage on the board, so... So, n interestingly, no Planeswalkers this game. We've relied upon our big creatures instead. So, you know, the multifaceted strengths of this Super Friends deck has been uh, fully evident. Yeah, I'm going to have to go look up what the uh, what that Boomin Eldrazi is called. It's just completely gone from my head. So we're going to get quite a bit of gold from this. So we are going to go up to rank 28. We are going to get 120 gold from the Champion of Dragon Skull Summit. There we go. So we are going to be able to open four packs today. So let's have a quick look at... I'm, I'm literally just going to go find this quick. So I'm really kind of like annoyed with myself. I can't remember what it's called. So... Is it Ulamog? Ulamog! Yes! He's like, yeah, Ulamog! That's who... Basically that's who was afraid of coming down that game. But uh, luckily we got away with it. So we are going to be opening up uh, six packs four packs today so we're only a thousand gold short of actually finishing the set off now which is awesome and then we're just saving up for the next three months for eldritch moon and i realized it was like may june and most of july if they really if they release it on time as well so i've got three months i've never been in a situation before where i've basically going to be saving up for uh, ooh, crush of tentacles surge three return all non-land permanents to their owner's hands if crush of tentacles surge cost was paid put eight eight blue octopus creature token onto the battlefield that's pretty cool actually uh, what else have we got? Ruining their weight. We've seen a lot of these before, I think. Eldrazi Aggressor has haste as long as you control another colour's creature. Vines of the Recluse. Target creature gets plus two, plus one, plus two, and gains reach until end of turn. It's pretty cool. Good for like the elf decks where they were like missing uh, the ability to deal with uh, flyers now. Reflector Mage. So that's pretty cool for like a white blue deck, white blue humans in particular, or just uh, like tap dance or anything like that. 
Fall of the Titans we've seen before, Battle of Pop I think we've seen before, as we thought Harvester, Crumbling Vestige, so it's a mana isn't it, so yeah you can just uh, add, so when it enters the battlefield add one mana of any colour to your mana pool, not the most useful right now, especially with the priority bug where it essentially just kind of like wipe it away, we will be buying two more packs though. So yeah, I was talking about how the fact that I've never been in a situation before where I've just got so much time to save up for the next expansion. And I mean, Eldritch Moon's a small set as well, so that's only like 9,600 gold. So providing I can get that in the next kind of like three months, um, I said Eldritch Moon is due to release at the end of July for the paper. So like I said, depending on whether or not they can actually get this out in time. So we've got Chitin's Cloak, Thought Harvester, Codelix Strider, Pulse of Murasa, Return Target Creature or Land Card to its owner's hand. So kind of like, um, what's I'm looking for? Reanimator style card. Also we've got Witness the End I think we've seen before. Target opponent exiles two cards from his or her hand. So it's kind of like a bit of a troll card that is. Uh, Step Glider. So it's a five mana two four flying vigilance target creature with plus target creature with a plus one plus one counter on it gains flying and vigilance till end of turn. So an okay card. Got another allied reinforcements though. And an Eldrazi Mimic. Whenever another colourless creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may change Eldrazi Mimic's base power and toughness to that creature's power and toughness until end of turn. Wow, that's pretty fantastic actually. You could drop like an Ulamog down and it become a 10-10. That's bonkers. Okay, so yeah, 1,000 gold left, so seven more packs, and then we've finished the set, which is awesome. Uh, like I said, then we'll be saving up for Eldritch Moon, uh, due to drop at the end of July, so I've got all of May, all of June, and most of July to uh, save up gold, so that's going to be awesome. So I should have this amount of gold within about a week's time. But yeah, this was the uh, four colour, four colour, four colour super friends deck uh tune in next time for just some gameplay but as always guys don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode and i'll see you next time goodbye